load shedding today all the way from South Africa so that is why me and Peter is on this computer and we literally have our headset and we're sharing it um, but we're going to still attempt to produce a beautiful show for you um, if we do drop however um, in the spirit of teamwork which is actually our topic for today Stephen Westwood has volunteered to carry on the conversation so that we can get this very important information to you okay awesome so guys, without further ado, today's topic is how to make teamwork make the dream work. And here to talk on this topic, we have our own teamwork specialist, Peter Ingston, right next to me. Say hi, Peter. Hello, Peter. <laughs> then we have the one and only Tasha Cole, aka Miss Kiff in the house. We have um, Mr. Sales, Marlon August, also joining us. We have Stephen Levy from Dare to Be Coaching. 
we have Stephen Westwood all the way from the UK from SPW Copywriting, Karen Hrier from Fascinate in Seven, Caroline Hillier from Dumantra Designs, um, and that is our panel. I am so, so excited about this. I think this is going to be absolutely epic. Okay, cool. So to start us off with, I want to just emphasize the importance of this topic and where this can take you in business. So to do that, I'm actually going to ask Peter, our teamwork expert and co-founder of Explore ProTech, to talk to us just a little bit about the dream behind teamwork. So Peter, can you paint us a picture of what can teamwork do for an entrepreneur in this day and age? Okay, well, um, obviously in this day and age, everything has changed. Um, we are no longer able to just uh, meet and greet. Um, you know, there's a whole thing of um, we are now mostly stuck behind our PCs as entrepreneurs. Um, the whole thing of um, going out there and hosting events and physically shaking people's hands is a thing of the past. Um, this is now, uh, there's a new way of doing business. Um, you, you'll find that everybody is online. And we take a look at entrepreneurs and how they build their businesses and what they do and what they try to achieve. And when we look at entrepreneurs, our understanding of an entrepreneur is somebody in business. And I, th I just looked up the meaning of the word, which is, um, uh, which leads towards enterprise. So it's somebody in business that is doing something to intentionally profit. Nine times out of 10, they are doing it on their own. Their business solely relies on themselves. Um, you know, if something goes wrong, um, if they fall ill, the business stands still. Um, if they, um, you know, if they can't manage to make it to a meeting, um, the meeting doesn't happen. Um, there are so many little, um, avenues of things that, that everything relies on the entrepreneur but that's changed because what we're doing is we're looking to change the meaning of the word the word entrepreneur brings to mind solo it brings to mind one person in business we are looking to change that we are looking to create and bring emphasis to the fact that if you are an entrepreneur you do not need to do business on your own um, yes, understandably, your business is yours, um, you run your business, but there are so many people in the same situation um, that run similar businesses, that run um, businesses that um, that can actually run jointly or even, um, um, or even benefit your business as much as what yours can benefit them. Those people are what you would consider team. Even your competition what used to be your competition is not competition anymore. We are in an online space. There is enough pie for everybody. Um, so when Explore Project was founded, it was built on the concept of building relationships, building friendships, creating team, working together. Now I can see that on the panel, we've actually got, um, we've got people that are members and part of our tribe this, this is a team. This is how a team functions. So, Misty, over to you. Thank you so much, Peter. Um, I think that's absolutely epic. And like from my perspective, you know, teamwork has absolutely changed my life. It was like Peter said um, this morning to me, before, when I was just running my accounting practice, I was basically stuck behind a desk like 24 seven, like no jokes, no holidays, no time without the laptop, you know, that's just your life. And now we can go anywhere, we can do almost anything and we have such amazing people to back us up. Um, it's just incredible. Um, so on that note, what I want to hear from the panelists is just one or two stories of, can you relate to this? How has teamwork looked for you in business, in entrepreneurship? Can you guys please share with us? And I think if we could maybe start with Carrie, that would be amazing. Hi guys. Um, okay. Well, 
A story comes to mind from quite a few years ago. Um, I was working at a company and I was running um, the graphic design department slash production. So we had to, obviously, we, we often dealt with clients. Um, there were a lot of walking clients. Um, and some can be rather difficult. <laughs> and I had um, a, a team colleague of mine who was working there. And this client came in and she'd made a mistake. Not intentionally, obviously. And he was irate. He wanted to literally smash everything down. He was shouting at the top of his lungs, cutting on and swearing and everything. And this poor girl, shame, she started crying. And I could just see that this was not going to work. So I went up to her, I tapped her on the shoulder, and I said, go have a cup of tea or something. I'll sort this out. And I managed to calm him down. I managed to, to I said to him, look, you know, it's happened. There's, there's not much we can do about it. Let's, um, let's see the way forward. We've got A, B, C, D, and E. What would you like to go with? And at the end of it, he was not only pleasant, but we sorted it out within that day, and it was all done. So, you know, there are going to be times where, where your teammates are going through a hard time. You don't know what's going on at home. You don't know if they're having a bad day. Um, and sometimes you just got to take one for the team and stand up for them and, and help. Mm -hmm. um, and it makes a big difference. It really does. It helps the clients. It helps them. Yeah. So very important to to be there as a, as a teammate and, and to support wherever you can. Awesome. Thank you so much for yeah, sharing, that's nice Carrie. Story. That's beautiful. Um, I wonder if next up, can we maybe hear from Karen? Karen, do you have a story for us? You changed the order here, Nestine. <laughs> Where's Stephen <laughs> Levy first? <laughs> um, well, I suppose there's twofold for me. There's one in, in when I was in corporate, um, you know, doing project management. We were fired as a, a the, the client fired the team <laughs> or fired us as a company. And I wasn't involved in, you know, I wasn't looking after the, that particular client, but they called me in um, for my expertise in being able to network and, you know, emotionally connect with people. So they, they called me. I had no idea what the client was about. I had no idea about the analytics behind it, but all I did was say, okay, so I've got to go in there. I'm going to just, you know, connect with them emotionally. I'm going to bring my analytical partner in because he did all the figures and numbers. So we just changed the dynamic a little bit. We went in, I captured them, you know, from walking in, being able to connect with them on an emotional level and he managed to come in and do the analytics that I'm proud to say we actually saved it um, and that was just through you know broad teamwork which was really amazing they, they picked up you know who could do what to, to do what they needed to do then the other example will be now being on my own um, as an entrepreneur I work within a team environment although I'm not you know, they're not employed by me. We all work sort of, it's collaboration, which is the same thing, mm. isn't it? It's teamwork. So um, one of the amazing benefits of, or for me, being part of the Expo Protect tribe is exactly that. These are my teammates. So every panelist around you here is a teammate to me. Um, when I'm needing to do whatever it is, there's experts in the room that I can rely on that can give me advice, can help me. I never feel like I'm alone in my journey. And we're all working together for a, a common goal. And that's to raise each other up and to to be able to you know make sure that we're all excelling so we all sort of tap into each other's expertise and that's a classic example of teamwork right there so beautiful thanks for sharing karen i think um let's hear one more story so who has the best story from the rest of the panelists well, they're all gonna say they're all gonna say yes stephen <laughs> levy I don't know if it's the best story because I'm sure everybody's story is the best. Um, everybody's story is a great story, but just on, uh, I think you know what That's Peter such said. Such a Stephen thing to say, Stephen. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to. <laughs> I was just going to say that. <laughs> well, it is. Um, we need to listen to each other's stories more often. But you know, I want to go. Dr. Peter spoke very much about uh, teamwork, and especially today, because of the intense time we live in, uh, the the pace of it. But it's not a new thing, uh, teamwork. You know, if you look back to um, the day, nobody. If you look at nobody's ever exceed, uh, achieved anything of greatness on their own. Even um, Thomas Edison, he had people around him. Um, if you look at Michael Jordan one of the great 
uh, basketball players. Without his team, he's nothing. Mm -hmm. um, he wouldn't have achieved it. Look at people like uh, Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett uh, had a team of people around him. If you read his books, there was Benjamin Graham that was behind him. So everybody's, even though they've been on their own, haven't achieved it on their own. They might have been the sole responsibility for what they do, but they were surrounded by a team. My, and then there's something that I, I always have to say, if we were all good at everything, we wouldn't need each other, but we're not. So for those people who think, oh, I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but we're not good at everything. We also get things that we're not good at. And we need to recognize that and pull people in if we want to create the highest probability of achieving what we want to. Mm. So being, I've been a kind of a solo entrepreneur for oh, in excess of 20 years. And I've had my fair share of ups and downs and I've had to take responsibility for that. But as I got further into it, I learned how important it is to have a great team with you. And so I'll give you a story of mine was I was in the textile industry for about 20 odd years. Um, and I'm the, I'm the furthest thing from fashion you'll ever find. So would have I exceeded, excelled or been a success in the textile industry without my team? Not at all. I can tell you that right now. While I was the sole owner of the business, without my team, the business would not have succeeded. And thank God there were people there that were real fashion conscious people. Um, and that highlighted to me really the importance of teamwork. And then each of the people in those teams had functions that to perform and that things that they were good at. And in teamwork to make it succeed is there's a thing called communication is key. And to recognize and not to compete with each other inside the business or in the team, like here, there's a great tribe, there's a great team and every one of these people on this panel and every one of the people in the tribe. And I noticed it, it was stood out very much for me uh, last night when we had our panel discussion on the Explore project. Everybody has something to contribute to the team in their field of expertise. And when they focus on that, and when the team recognizes that, you will create a high performing world class team or tribe, whatever you want to call it. And then you will achieve what you want or increase the probability. I'm sorry, I keep saying that because there are no guarantees in life. And because of that, we need to embrace teamwork more and more. And I could carry on about this for days, but the other panelists, so I'm going to shut up now and <laughs> give my teammates a chance to talk because I'm sure they've got <laughs> value to contribute to this. I love that story. And I mean, I think I actually like what I know about teamwork. I obviously learned a lot from Peter, but actually like the first person that I spoke to about teamwork was you, Stephen. And it's, you have this saying where, what was it again? That you don't build a business, you find the right people and the people build the business. 100%. I will never forget yeah. that. That's one of the first things you say to me. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, okay, where do I find people? <laughs> And then I found Peter who found the people. But it's not just the people, it, Nestine, it's the right people. You can find people. It's easy to find people. It's to find the right people that share the same values. So it doesn't mean that they're bad people. They just might not share the same values as what you do. And if they don't, they maybe need to hop into another bus where the values suit them. Yeah. Thank so, you. That's such a valuable And point. by the way, that quote wasn't mine. It was from Zig Ziglar. Thank you, Stephen. Um, so... Now with the teamwork thing, like I've always, um, well, I've been learning from Steven, you know, and from Peter, how important teamwork is. And I've been seeing it in practice and how the amazing things that you can achieve and everyone just goes so much faster. You goals just become reachable all of a sudden. Like when we all doing what we're good at, it's just such a beautiful process and the stick gets handed over. It's like a relay race to the end and we all win. It's stunning. But now, me being a classic solopreneur from the accounting profession, I know that this team thing, there is problems in achieving this. It's like, I felt at one stage in my entrepreneurial career, I was like, this, like, I know the books write about this and it must be true that some people get this right, but I have no clue how to. How do you make teamwork work? 
So that's where I actually am going to need your guys' help now. So we need to tell entrepreneurs out there, if they solo right now, right? No team, no collaboration partners, no referral partners. What is step one for them? What do they need to keep in mind? Where do we go? Miss Kit. Sorry, I have to get in first year in terms of this. You've got to join global speed networking group because trust me, then you'll get into the KIF team. <laughs> um, no, seriously, I feel like you have to find something that I've done for myself is I started one thing I wanted to achieve in 2020 is find like-minded people around me um, because you need people to understand that mindset of being an entrepreneur. It's tough. And when you can have, be in a room full of entrepreneurs that are going through the same struggles or going through the highlights and, you know, every Wednesday we come together with the group and we have, you know, training session. But what's great about the training session is just not like, okay, we're training you. It's about, um, the brainstorming so you kind of get out of this brain fog or you feel inspired and motivated to transition into the next phase or uh, ambition or you need someone just to uplift you so find like-minded individual individuals that you can resonate with so that it can keep you almost accountable for your actions and keep you motivated on your journey that's for me something important Stunning and excellent plug. We salute you, Tasha. <laughs> That's how you do it. Miss Kip in the house. Okay, guys, so I'm hearing from Tasha. Step one, okay, find people that you can at least speak to, right, that you get along with, that share the same values as you. What is step two? Now you've found these people. What now? Can we uh, hear from Stephen and then Marlon? Yeah, just quickly, all I wanted to do was add on to something that Tasha said. The whole point of teamwork is that it's people working towards a common goal. That if you have that in mind, you're going to find the right people to work with to help you achieve your goals. That's all I wanted to add. Sorry about that. No, that's beautiful. That, that is actually exactly it. And, and if you don't, I, I'd say like one of the things that is, is critical because you can, you can now, and, and Stephen brought it up around connecting with people. Um, Tasha even brought up a place where you can exactly go, you know, you can go to a networking group like us. Um, but the, 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 the way you're going to draw out of it is by clarity. So you've got to know what you want, you know, where do you where do you need help? What help can you actually bring to the table? Um, and 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 if you got that clarity, because I mean I've, it's because in our connections and connecting with many people, you get these situations where you where you meet people and they're just like, <laughs> you know, I just want business, and and yeah. it just doesn't work like that. You know, you 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 got to have there's a give and take, and you just got to be clear on what that is. So when you bring it to the table people will want to help you. People will want to connect with you. So um, yeah, that's what I want to share on that. And I add to that. <laughs> of course, I'm going to add to that. <laughs> it is uh, clarity, obviously, very much so. You know, defining um, what your common goal is as well is very, very important, you know, when you're working together. But I think even more than that is understanding your own strengths your own differences, your own unique talents. You really need to figure yourself out, know what it is that you bring and stand confidently in that. And then you can actually work with that team and you actually all celebrate what your unique talents are and gifts that you bring to the party. And it, it, it ties in very nicely with what, what Marlon said, because we all have gifts and talents. And when you're going with yours and you're confident in that offering, you are going to collaborate with people that are bringing differences in it and you appreciate that with one another. And I think that's when we're, you know, synergy really really happens get clear about your your own strengths and talents and things can i add something on tina's dean all of you just continue the discussion i'm learning so much just like keep adding so i want to also add on to just expand on what marlon said is that i think often 
and I've seen it, a lot of people go to network groups to see how much they can get out of it. And that's the wrong motivation. It's not about doing business. If you do business with each other, if you take this, this tribe, if you do business with each other, I think it's a bonus. For me, the importance of belonging to a tribe of like-minded people with a common goal and shared values is, are we able to support and guide each other with everybody's expertise in, a, in building our businesses and so on? They don't have to, just knowing that they're there and you have this pool of expertise that you can call on mm -hmm. to maybe help you in your business. If they can help you give you business to actually tangibly grow it, oh, it's a bonus, but I don't think that should be the motivation of a, of a team, a group of people working together because it's not a group of people working together. A team is a group of people who trust each other. Yeah, um, Stephen, if I can add to that, if you take um, salespeople, for instance, and they are looking to meet like-minded people and they want to join a team, and their intentions are to join to make sales, then all they're going to do is try and sell stuff to each other. It, it doesn't work, you know, but if you join with the intention of your fellow salesperson can maybe teach you something on how to become a better salesperson, you are learning and you are working in team. So there's the difference. Uh, the difference between um, belonging in a place where people are like-minded um, and being there for the right reason mm -hmm. Um, creates longevity in your team being there for the wrong reason and you will try and sell to them and they will try and sell to you and it will all end and you'll need to find another team yeah yeah i think Pete, you know it, it comes back to your sorry josh it's comes just quickly and then i'm going to shut up it comes back to your philosophy is uh, have coffee first and then do business always <laughs> love it Tasha, go for it i just i love how passionate this panel is about this topic it's excellent Definitely. Um, I just want to add in terms of vulnerability. I did mention something like this last week, but again, vulnerability is the key to success, everyone. Like it's time to leave the ego in the back and bring everything face forward. Just because by being vulnerable, you really open that connection with everyone else. And I feel like, you know, again, we have the opportunity to change this level of entrepreneurship where we can walk into a room and feel confident, not walk into a room and go, oh my goodness, they're better than me. Because at the end of the day, we are all the best at what we do. We all have our own fascinating um, self to bring to the table, as Karen would say. And that's the thing. It's just show vulnerability and you will, you will attract the people that resonate with you the most. Don't feel unconfident or anything just come show up just being you don't put pressure on yourself something i really like about that space is that um it doesn't matter what you do as an entrepreneur you know i, I could sell electrical plugs as an entrepreneur and i could walk door to door and somebody else could be an attorney um, and work for themselves there is no difference in hierarchy just because one is an attorney and, I, and the other one sells plugs you're still both entrepreneurs. There is still such valuable lessons that you can learn from each other that, that as an, the attorney can learn from the plug salesman. You know, there, there's always value to offer. So there is no hierarchy. An entrepreneur is an entrepreneur. The only thing that we are doing when we are working is in team is that we are looking at everybody else's um, strong points and we're learning from that. So if me learning from, um, from an attorney, I, I would learn that there's certain things that I'm not allowed to do. Like I'm not allowed to walk into somebody's property trying to sell them a plug. You know? <laughs> I, I, I learn that. Um, but there's the thing of give and take. So it doesn't matter if you are selling matchsticks um, or whether you're selling like multi-billion dollar contracts. There's still that element of one can learn from the other. I love that, Peter. And like, I just have to say, and then we'll take Stephen and then Caroline. I mean, Stephen Westwood and then Carrie. But like, that's something, Miss Kiff, that is so special for me about this tribe, especially because I've never had that before. I've always been solo. And Peter has just somehow managed to create this dynamic 
where i mean look at you guys you're all so welcoming and warm and amazing and supportive and if if my zoom crashes in the middle of a coffee shop show i can literally just go like miss keith help and like you help and if i'm like down about anything and i and i and i need to speak about business i can speak to stephen levy if there's like this it's just amazing it's so amazing for mm. me I've never felt in this tribe that I can't be myself or vulnerable. So I just want to say thank you to you guys for that. Like, just thank you so much. I think it's epic. And I think like the result of, for example, the meeting that we had last night, we can really start seeing how the result pays off in reality. Because that was stunning. It was epic. Okay, can we hear from Steven? Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say like, being vulnerable isn't just being vulnerable, it's being authentic, it's being your true self. And I think what I love most about the coffee shop group and you guys is we're all here for the same reason. We're all here because we want to put those relationships first. We want to help each other. Um, in terms of going out and finding your team, your tribe, I think it's important to remember your own needs. Um, I do have an exercise actually that helps you to start reflecting on who you are as a person. I won't do it now because it, it could take a good five, 10 minutes, but I will pencil it in for another meeting. Uh, you'll all enjoy it, you'll all love it. Um, but- Wait, who wants to do Stephen's exercise? Because we literally have about 10 minutes left. <laughs> we no want to do Steven. <laughs> okay get yourselves uh, a pen and paper or open up a document okay i have a pen paper <laughs> paper yes paper okay so i'm going to ask you three questions what you need to do is you're going to answer the question and then for each one, give me three deep reasons why. So the first question is, what is your favorite color? And then you're gonna give me three deep reasons why. Now deep reasons is not saying that my favorite color is blue because it looks like the sea. What does it make you feel? What does it make you think? Why is it your favorite color? Think this deeply. is hard. I don't want to play anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, it's worth it. The payoff is worth it. Okay, okay. Hold the mic. <laughs> oh, dear. And for those of you who are watching, you can play along as well. Um, I think the answers will surprise you when it's all revealed. Just let me know when you're ready. Tash is ready. 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 Okay. okay, so the next question, what is your favorite animal? And three reasons why, deep reasons why. Is this gonna turn me into like a blue pig dog? <laughs> <laughs> you'll see you'll see does it have to be a real animal or can it be like a uh what is those mystical things? can it be a unicorn <laughs> i suppose so if you can give me three deep reasons why it's your favorite okay cool This, by the way, is also a good exercise to get to know people. Um, and again, I can't wait to reveal why. 
Let me know when you're ready for the third question. Ready. Okay, so what is your favorite form or body of water? And three deep reasons why. So by form, I mean rain, snow, ice. Uh, by body of water, it could be anything from an ocean to a lake to a puddle to a bird bath to a jacuzzi, whatever the body of water is. And then three deep reasons why. And while you're answering that, I, Steve's ready. Um, so while you're answering that, I'll just explain that. I found this exercise through a, um, a lady called Teal Swan, who is like a mentor and coach, and she's from the US. Um, and it is a fantastic exercise. I fell in love with it as soon as I um, discovered it. <laughs> so let me know when you're ready. Okay. Okay. So what you're going to do is for the first question, um, you're going to, if you've said that, if you've written like the word color or the actual word itself, what your favorite color is, just put a line through that and write the word personality. <laughs> for your um favorite animal just put a line through what your favorite animal is and put the word life partner ideal life partner sorry oh my word you... that's all i can say so far <laughs> <laughs> this one will make you laugh so for the body of water Cross out the body of water uh, and with a single line and replace it with <laughs> sexuality or sex. <laughs> that's very funny. <laughs> okay, okay, I've got so a word that's stronger than Karen's, but I can't say it on here. <laughs> but it does have to do with sex. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so is this still a, this still a team chat? <laughs> yeah, it's, it totally is still. We're getting to know each other. Stephen showing us how. <laughs> okay, so and it's so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> so the deep answers that you've got for your color are your personality. They uh, reflect your personality. The deep answers that you've got for your um, for your favorite animal obviously reflect what you're seeking in your ideal life partner. Uh, and obviously, your favorite formal body of water, the deep reasons for that are your attitude towards your own sex life or your sexuality. Um, if it's a really, really deep answer, it could also be uh, towards your, your attitude towards life. Uh, does anybody want to share their answers? I'm going to share one thing. <laughs> I thought Go it was on, funny. Karen. The sexuality part was ever changing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to analyze. I hope that means that in myself. <laughs> I thought it was funny, though. There's a word that comes to mind, Karen. Ever changing is like a prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Not you, by the way. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I just associated with ever changing. This and is sex. actually very interesting, Stephen. Jokes aside, um, it's fascinating. I'll, I'll, I'll say personality-wise, for me, my favorite color is turquoise, and the way it makes me feel is very summery and vibrant. Um, and yeah. I feel good. Okay, it said it makes me feel good and sunshiny. I feel very sunshiny. So if that's personality attributes, I hope that's what people see because that's <laughs> <laughs> yep. One hundred percent. Spot on. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else like to share? Mm, I don't know if I should. <laughs> okay. So um 
My color, favorite color is pink, but like in all forms. So I said that it makes me feel empowered and symbolizes female uh, empowerment, which I love. And the sparkles, meaning rose gold, pink, uh, sparkles represent my personality because that just makes me feel stiff. So that's definitely mm. good. And then my ideal life partner I'll share because the other one is a lot deeper and will <laughs> It's like levels to it, which I could totally explain, but it's not really topical for this particular show. So uh, <laughs> my ideal life partner, which I think is so cute actually, can smother me with love. Uh, I love how they make me feel protected and you can trust them and they're loyal and because I love dogs. So oh. that was mm -hmm. so cool and spot because that's exactly what I, I look for in a life partner. Miss Keeper, are you single at the moment? No, sorry. Thank <laughs> 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 you. Find you your ideal partner, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. <I'm fine. laughs> Oh, no. Marlon, what is your you. say? Um, okay, cool. Th this was actually a lot of fun, me, Stephen. Um, so, so my my favorite color is green. Um, I don't actually have. This is the. I don't feel. I never felt I had a favorite color. But when it was asked, I just went with the first, the first color that came to my mind, right? And that was green. And the reason why it's it's warm, it's fun, and it's welcoming. So. I thought that was interesting when you shifted that to personality. Like, oh, that's fun. And then, um, <laughs> then, then the, the, the animal, my favorite animal I've always known is a griffin. And, and the reason was mystical, magical, and unique. Um, and and, and I, well, I feel my wife is definitely those, those things. I don't, I don't know about mysticals, but definitely she's magical <laughs> and unique. <laughs> but, uh, and I guess the way, the way she can surprise me can be mystical, definitely. Um, and then, and then, well, the, the, the sex part, uh, or sea, is actually my favorite, my favorite body of water is the sea. Um, you, as soon as you said it, I just like went straight there and it's mainly because it's strong, it's ever changing <laughs> and it's, it's soft, <laughs> soft and hard, you know, you got that movement. So yeah, that's, uh, I mean, like, I, thought, <laughs> really, really, really oh, no. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Carrie. Okay. I'm only going to do two. <laughs> Leave the last one out. <laughs> um, okay. My favorite color is black which is like kind of weird but yeah um because it goes with everything and it's a strong and rich color um and it's solid and easily seen so it's, yeah, i suppose <laughs> okay and then um my favorite um, is actually um a dragon um because they're powerful um um, if you look at like the actual look of them, they're like really stunning. They're beautiful, um, and then they can fly. So I think that pretty sum pretty much sums up Ed. Oh. So, hey. So is your husband a pilot? <laughs> no, but he's like in his personality, he never sets a limit. He always goes far above and beyond and flies. And he always accomplishes whatever he says is going to be. So. Oh. And he's sexy. <laughs> <laughs> and he's actually an incredibly strong man. He's like, he's got Dutch, Dutch, and off the God's blood. So he's like, Dutch. That's, That's awesome. And Stephen Levy? The favorite color was blue. And it is because my mom loves said I always look good in blue. No, it's, uh, oh. no, it's it, for me, blue is about calmness, about honesty, and a little bit of detail in that. Um, and that is, yeah, I suppose, the personality. The animal um, was a dolphin uh, because it's, it's flowing and agile, and it's gentle yet protective. And I picked that up from our surfing days because it's the only it's the only mammal that the sharks uh, won't attack. Mm. Yeah. And yet it's so gentle. Mm. The third one, I'm going to skip the sex and sex partner. 
Um, but how you look at life. And so the body of water that came straight to mind was a lake because there's stillness, there's reflection, and there's like a, a calm silence in it. Hmm. That's Shining. It. That's awesome. brilliant. Hmm. Um, Maya, are you actually, did you do this with us? Or are you going to share with us? Yeah, good afternoon. I was stuck in the wrong link. But anyway, the favorite color is black. So can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, all right. Because it absorbs heat and it means it can take pressure. Uh, it's uniform that symbolizes equality and equity. And it's a precious color. The animal is the wolf because if it's, it's intelligent, it's strong, it's calm but aggressive. The, the water part, I'll probably talk about two, is the ocean. The first part is it's self cleansing, the ocean is self cleansing, and it's quite calming. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so it. much for sharing and what a better way to get to know you. Thank you, Stephen, for doing that with us. You're welcome. You guys, that is uh, how you Steve, build a that's team. that's awesome. Man. That is how you build a team. So be authentic, be vulnerable, be ready to get to know each other on a personal level. Find the people that you share your values with that are your like-minded tribe and hang around with them and just go for goal because this really does work. Yeah, Miss Kiev. I just want to add something into the mix before we do in the coffee shop, but just to stir it up a bit. Um, team is not only like how you interact with others. Um, it's also if you are a CEO or boss of a company. Um, I overheard this with uh, Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, and if you don't know him, he's amazing social media guru. Um, and just on really awesome to watch. Um, but he said something about having good culture at work. Now mm -hmm. you need to understand who works, who work, who you work with. They do, they do not work for you. You work with them because they essentially hold your brand. Okay. Together. And you need to, um, understand what, makes them, motivates them and what makes them tick. So make sure that you action by having one-to-ones. Um, and Gary Vee said that I think he's over 600 employees. And he said he makes it um, a thing to schedule one-to-one so that he knows how to motivate and grow them so that they can stay in the company obviously for longer because if they're not reaching their personal goals then they'll just leave and you'll see a lot of uh, people have this high turnover of staff is because the old mentality is that, no you work for me you shut up and you are just like who are you you know where we are all individuals and I feel like it's so important if you have a team working with you or if you aspire to have a team work for you know that you come last they come first just a quick one yes like like richard branson said your company is your staff without them you don't have a company that's it that's so true basically what it is mm. and so even really if it's a technology right company now. yeah and, 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 here's, and here's the thing, right? For entrepreneurs that are out there um, that are either feeling they don't know which way to turn, the market has changed, um, they don't know what to do next, um, there's all, 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 all the, uh, everything is up in the air. Um, what move do they make next? What do they change? How do they position themselves? There's so many questions. But the thing is, when you get involved in a team, your team have the answers. You cannot find the answers on your own. You will, you'll just end up going in circles. And even if you do find the answers, trying to achieve it on your own is a mammoth task. Mm -hmm. The task gets smaller when a team gets involved. So do yourselves a favor. Drop the mentality of I'm an entrepreneur and I do it on my own. If you're going to keep doing it that way, good luck. We are going to speedily row right past you because there is such power in teamwork so do yourselves a favor find your place find your team find people to connect with 
um, reach out. Um, it makes life so much easier. So if you do want to come and see if we are maybe some of your like-minded people, then come and join us at the next global online speed networking event, like Miss Kev said, and you'll meet all of these amazing tribe mates of mine over there. Um, just for the tribe as well, so on the point of one-on-ones, we had our first one-on-one -on -one with Maya yesterday, and it was really, really, really cool. Maya, this is your official welcome to the tribe. We're so happy to have you. He's a financial management coach, guys. So I would encourage those one-on-ones and having the coffee. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for the panel. You guys have contributed to an absolutely beautiful discussion. And Stephen Westwood is just like the best in the business. Like, thank you so much, Stephen. That was awesome. Okay, guys, we'll see you next time. Same time, same place next week again. And we'll be here with another how-to coffee shop conversation. Until then, love you lots. See you then. Bye-bye.